it's been my uh, perception that the churches of Galatia were very similar to the American uh, churches of our day. <clears throat> and also by, by my experience, uh, that seems to be the case. And so the apostle here is addressing them, and he wants to make it very clear uh, the, the source of his gospel and what he was preaching, and also to, to help them uh, with some false brethren who came in who were preaching another gospel, which was not another. And the Lord was, was, was giving him, the apostle, the ministry there to clarify that my gospel is not after men but by revelation of Jesus Christ. And he starts off in his epistle to them that he says, Paul, an apostle, and then right away, not of men, neither by men, but by the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Right off the bat, he wants to establish this fact that I'm an apostle, not of men, and not by men, but by Jesus Christ. And he goes on and he says that, and, and all the brethren that are, that are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then he said, I marvel. This is astonishing to me. It, it causes wonder. I marvel that you are so quickly or easily removed from him. Not just from his gospel, but he said, removed from him who called you by the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another. See, it was... There were some who came in that sought to spy out their liberty. And there were some who came in and they brought a perversion of the true gospel. Because there really isn't another. There's one gospel. And so anything that's contrary to that gospel or different from that gospel is actually another gospel or, or, or a perversion of the true uh, gospel. <clears throat> He said, there be some there that trouble you. See, that's a troubling, it's a troubling thing. And I, it, it seems to me that some of them didn't realize that it was troubling them. It was like a doctrine that opposed themselves. Those who received that, that gospel and then, and then proclaimed it, it was, it was actually in opposition to their progress in the faith. And so he expounded that to them as well. And they would pervert the gospel of Christ. And then he said, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So I said to you once, and I'm going to say it again. <laughs> if anyone preach another gospel, then that which you have received. See, they started well. But then that which you have received, let him be accursed. Then he says in verse 10, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? If I yet sought to please men, I would no more be a servant of Christ. See, the gospel is not after men. <clears throat> then he says in my text here in verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, I certify you, I want to confirm and validate and make sure that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of men, nor was I taught by men, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is very needful today, and you'll find that this is actually like a confession of the Apostle here, and you'll find that you'll be able to make the same exact confession. 
that the gospel that you preach was not taught you by men. Now, certainly someone came and preached the gospel to you, but you recognize that this was a voice of the shepherd. And you recognize when you receive that gospel and when you, uh, when you stand in that gospel and when you proclaim that gospel, that gospel is not after men, but you received it by revelation of Jesus Christ. And so I, the gospel or the false gospel or the, the temptation there for the Galatians was to go back to, a, to, to the law and, and seeking to be justified by the law. But see, the law actually was a schoolmaster to bring people to Christ. And there, uh, following these false brethren, was actually bringing them away from Christ. So it wasn't even, it wasn't even the law, per se. It was, it was the man's interpretation of the law, and it was drawing them away from Christ. See, if you study the law, if you read the law, if you preach the law, it'll actually bring you to the Lord, not separate you from the Lord. And so their gospel actually was after men. It, they received, it, was, it, was, it was a perversion of the word of God. <clears throat> now, the best way to deal with such a thing, it's like dealing with, with one who is sick. The best way to deal, you don't just treat the symptoms forever. You got you to get to the root cause of it. You got you to find, find the source. Where did this word come from? And see, Paul's establishing that the word, the source of my gospel, the source of the gospel is not men, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so knowing that, we can receive it, we can stand in it, we can be saved by it as, as we are. See, the way you handle a false gospel is, is like the same way you handle weeds. You don't just keep on cutting them, you got to uproot them, right? you gotta, you got to treat, treat the disease. you gotta, you got to cure the disease, and then you'll stop finding the symptoms, that's the issue here. And see, a lot of what, in my opinion, is going on is that maybe good and honest people can, can see a lot of symptoms that, that are springing forth in churches that aren't, that aren't they, that, that's not the production of the gospel. That's not, that's not what God produces. And so they go about establishing rules and laws and let's just treat all these symptoms. And they find out they just creep up in other areas. You got to find out where the source of that word is coming from. And if it's coming from God, it will not produce those See, 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 many have received another, another gospel, which is actually not another, but a perversion of the, of the true. Everything actually is indicative of its source. You, Jesus said that you'll know a tree by its fruit. <clears throat> well, Paul is eager to make known the source of his gospel. Uh, the Amplified says, for I want you to know, brethren... He, he saw that this was something that I need to declare to the brethren. It's, it's, gonna, it's helpful for me to explain this, to declare this, that my gospel is not after men. And it's going to be helpful for them to realize that this gospel is not after men. In other words, it's not worthy to be compared to the other things that other men are saying. It's by revelation of the Lord. You can just check it out with the scriptures. It'll be in accord with every one of them. <clears throat> Likewise, Peter once said, we have not followed cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the coming in the power of the Lord Jesus. See, that's another way of saying it. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. <clears throat> the source of the apostles' doctrine is what validates it and them. It's, it's, it's where it came from. Likewise, the source of our gospel is what validates us and our preaching. In other words, if it just comes from us, we, we're really not too interested. We really don't want to hear just what men have to say and just hear a new thing. We want to hear what the Lord has said. And so we, like Paul, can just say that which the Lord has revealed, that which the Lord has given unto me, that I delivered unto you. <clears throat> the source of a teaching is enough to validate the truth of the content. If it is from the Lord, we can confidently receive it. So it's of utmost importance to find out if this word is actually from the Lord or from men. Now the gospel is not after men. It's interesting how this is worded because Paul says, I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached to me is not after men. And then he says where it was from. But he wanted to establish first that where it's not from. So I want to talk about that first. That the gospel is not after men. In his very first words to the churches of Galatia, as we've seen, he said Paul, an apostle, not after men, neither by men. So, so Paul's apostleship and his preaching, neither of which were from men, but they were from the Lord. 
what he is and what he has is attributed not to men, but to the Lord. In other words, I am what I am, he affirms, by the grace of God. He wanted them to know that the gospel that he was preaching did not come from the same place as the doctrine that they were being deceived by. The gospel is not some philosophy that can be offered in, in uh, comparison with other philosophies of men. It's not, it's not as it's like familiar or common to say uh, today. It's, it's not, we don't have like the Christian alternative to helping you out. You know, you got self-help books over here. and we, here, We're just going to offer you the Christian alternative of the world is, is essentially what that means. That's not what the gospel is. <clears throat> the gospel is not... It's not after men. It's neither received from them nor taught by It's of a higher order. It's from above. He said, I did not receive it of men. Now, the conversations of men, are they're always in the language of their homeland. When you talk to one another, the words that you declare, it's going gonna, it's gonna to identify where you're from. Like the way you talk identifies where, you, where you're from. So we can come from all different places over the, uh, uh, from the world and come together in one place. And when we speak to one another, we'll find that we've all been born in Zion. Like this is just the way it is. Men of the world cannot preach the gospel of God any more than an Ephraimite could say Shibboleth. Right? This is like, it's like a, you listen to them say, that, that's not it. We need somebody else. That, he didn't get that from God. See, words reveal things. Preachers identify their citizenship by what they say. Those who are of God speak as of God. And those who are of men speak as of men. You're familiar with this text in 1 John? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They, talking about false prophets, those who, who have a spirit of antichrist, they are are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. See, you cannot just identify where they're from, where their message was from, because they, they spoke as of the world, and the world hears them. It's familiar language. <clears throat> we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. Now, a gospel that ties men to this world cannot be from the one who has determined to deliver men from this world. A gospel that is worldly in nature and requires the wisdom of the world cannot be from the one who has made the wisdom of this world foolishness. No message that pertains only to this world and fails to orient men unto the world to come can possibly be from the God who is bringing them there safely and victoriously. It just, that just makes no sense. Those who offer earth, earthly wisdom, as James said, which descendeth not from above, must not be tolerated for even an hour. <laughs> That's what the apostles said. We didn't tolerate them for even an hour. We didn't give an ear to them. Man, by his wisdom, does not come to know God. So anyone who, who, who attempts to bring us to a greater knowledge of the Lord through man's wisdom, it's just not going to happen. God has ordained that it will not. It will not happen. Man, by wisdom, will not come to know God. But see, the gospel, being that wisdom which is from above, well, you'll become thoroughly acquainted with the God of heaven when the gospel of the Lord Jesus and the gospel of God and the gospel of our salvation, when that's preached, you're going to be, become more acquainted with God and Christ. The gospel is a spiritual message revealed to us by the Spirit and it is spiritually discerned. It's not of men and it's not of this world. Do not attempt, therefore, to bring it down. <laughs> Don't attempt to bring, bring it to an earthly Level. See, what we do when we preach the gospel is we're actually bringing men of earth up higher. Yeah. We're not bringing that down. We're, we're calling them up higher. Yeah. You're bringing hearers up. The gospel is, in fact, a high calling. And by its very nature, it summons men above the earth. Like, just rise above what you can see and behold the things which are unseen. 
That's what the gospel does. It brings you up. It's not of men. <clears throat> it's our task to let it have its perfect work. Where it's not received on earth, let it have its perfect work. Where it is received, let it have its perfect work. The gospel doesn't change. You don't come up with different things in order to make it uh, acceptable or palatable to men of the earth. You preach the gospel and those who receive it, they'll come up higher. That's a pleasant experience, incidentally. <clears throat> a gospel received of men is another gospel, and as Paul said, is really a perversion of the, of the true. See, what the Galatians were battling with was a, a false gospel that would have them to be perfected after the flesh. which is just not going to happen. Specifically, it was removing them from the gospel of Christ and removing them from God himself. That's what, that's what entertaining that gospel would do. That's what entertaining a false doctrine will do. It'll not, not just to separate you from that gospel, it'll separate you from the one who called you by the grace of Christ. <clears throat> In other words, it is, it is your business to thrust such things off. When you hear, you got, it has to be, their mouths must be stopped. Like the, that, that word has to be thrust off from you. You have to wage war against it. And by the grace of God, we can. Why? Because the gospel is by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so you can kind of just, you can kind of just weigh the words in a balance. And you'll find that if it doesn't, if, it, if it's not according to, it's a word of scripture alive. If it's not according to the scriptures, if it's not according to the word of the gospel, if it's not according to the word of the truth, then it's not of God. <clears throat> what they had been tempted with was a hindrance, and many of them did not even know it. Those who propagated it and furthered it were actually opposing themselves in doing so. But see, false go gospels are efforts to persuade men, right? He said, I, I do not seek to persuade men. That wasn't my effort, just to like convince men to like join my, join my group. <laughs> I, wasn't, I didn't seek to please men. <clears throat> A false gospel will, in fact, seek to please men and to tickle ears. And it is an occasion to boast in the flesh. This is very common in our day. Of course, it's rather disgusting to us that, that many would seek to preach a gospel that would just please the hearers so that they could grow their number and join our group. That's like a boasting in your flesh. <clears throat> As I said before, I say it now again. Thrust those things off. With, with great vigor and hostility, thrust it off. <clears throat> it's a perversion of the true. We do, we do that... As, as, as we receive a love of the truth so as to be saved, right? That's, that's, that's what we're doing. We're receiving a love of the truth so as to be saved. We're zealous for the truth, and then we're able to thrust off anything that opposes that very thing because we're zealous for the Lord God. See, the gospel is a declaration of God. It's a manifestation of, of the Lord. And so when things are presented to us that are contrary, they see that when the doctrines of men present a, a Christ that is, that is another Christ and a gospel that's another gospel and a spirit that's another spirit, when those things are presented well, this is like time to go and, and flip the tables in the temple. Like that's just, it, zeal for his house has consumed us, right? And so we have to thrust those things off just as the Lord would. Amen. He said, I was not taught it by men. I, I, I rejoice in this. I, I rejoice in this because I can fellowship with Paul in this, right? And so can you. See, I've, I've been familiar with the gospel of men. And so when he says, I wasn't taught it by men. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ, I can say, I remember when I was taught by men, and I remember when I received it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a cause for great rejoicing. <clears throat> the gospel is primarily a declaration, an announcement, a proclamation. <clears throat> Where the declaration is not received, any explanation will appear as foolishness to any unbeliever. Like, if you, if you announce the gospel and it's not received, you can try to explain as much as you want. But if they don't receive the revelation of the Lord, it, it's just time, it's time wasted. <clears throat> the gospel is not something taught by men. It is something given by revelation. Men are declaring that which they have received from the Lord. See, any explanation 
Or I like the word exposition. I like that. See, it's the exposing of what the Lord has said. Any further explanation concerning the gospel is actually requires more revelation. It requires that God reveal more. And so then you can explain more, but really you're just exposing the truth of the Lord. You're actually, uh, like Brother Dan was ministering, you're, you're actually revealing this is what the prophets were speaking of, right? You're just, you're just revealing that the mystery which was, which was hid. It's a revelation. It's a revealing. <clears throat> so we are not actually guessing when we interpret a text. We're reasoning upon the revelation of God. Paul did not receive any... He, he said, I wasn't taught of men. I wasn't taught it by, I wasn't taught it by men. See, when, you just want to think about this. When, when the apostle Paul, uh, when the gospel was revealed to him, it, it didn't come with man's teachings. Paul, now here's how you're going to, here's how you're going to preach a sermon, Paul. Like it didn't come with a course in homiletics. He wasn't, he wasn't taught it of men. He didn't receive strategies on how to stir up the right response and he wasn't educated in how to persuade men. These sort of things, well, they, weren't, they just weren't necessary, frankly. <clears throat> no gimmicks were given to him about how to grow an audience, to get them in or to reach the community. He preached that which was revealed to him, and it did the very work that it was supposed to do. <clears throat> in my opinion, the presence of such things in our day seems to be a manifestation that the gospel of many is, in fact, after men. And as such is powerless to accomplish anything beyond a form of godliness. But see, Paul was not taught by men. Jesus revealed himself to Paul, and Paul was constrained to preach. So an identifying mark of the false gospel is that it originates from the earth, and it's therefore endorsed and empowered by the God of the earth, by the ruler of this world. They proceed from the world... And are of the world, therefore out of the world, its whole, its whole economy morally considered, that they speak. And the world listens to or pays attention to them. That's the amplified version. <clears throat> so it's our task to take caution and to test the spirits to see whether they be of God. Whenever Jesus is given a back seat to other men, it's not from God. When this world is the primary world, it's another message. When men can accomplish the given objectives without God, without Christ, and without the Spirit, this is another gospel. It's our task when we hear such things to, to judge what is said, to evaluate its source, and if it's not from God, thrust it off. <clears throat> The gospel is not after men. It is not to be compared with other teachings. Other teachings are actually weighed by the revelation. They're actually brought into subjection to what God has revealed to see if they're worthy. <clears throat> I, I think this is a sort of safeguard against being deceived. Being that the gospel is a revelation of Jesus Christ, we, we, are, we readily are able to say, well, this I got from God. And what do you have to say? And then whatever men have to say, we can kind of just say, well, no, it's, it doesn't accord with what God has said, so it's wrong. It's a safeguard against being deceived. <clears throat> if you receive and stand in the gospel, you cannot be deceived unless you leave it or are removed from it by giving heed to the vain babblings of men. You have to disregard what God has said and entertain what man is saying in order to be deceived or taken captive by another gospel. That's what has to happen. I like what the, what, uh, the apostle said here in chapter 2, verse 6 of Galatians. He said, remember when he went up, he said, those who seemed to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God receiveth. No man's person. But he said, those who seem to be somewhat added nothing unto me. <laughs> that's, that's what he said. <clears throat> in other words, man in their own wisdom and strength, they can't add anything to the minister of the gospel. In other words, you don't have to receive the gospel by revelation of Jesus Christ and then go consult commentaries and, uh, and your contemporaries and see what they have to say about it. 
I'm not, I'm not opposed to gatherings like this where we expound the gospel, but really, really we're just, we're, we're just rejoicing in the truth that's already been made known. And it's, it's, it's more of a confirming effect, right? It's more of like, well, well I, 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 was, I see that too, right? And so we can rejoice in the truth that a brother has been given and proclaims and, and what was revealed to him. But see, we don't compare it and say, well, this is what I see, received from the Lord. And well, what do you, you know, is it, is it, can I have your commendation, right? He didn't immediately consult with flesh and blood. But yet, when he fellowshiped in the truth with the Lord, he did not neglect to go declare that word to flesh and blood, right? He went and preached with boldness because he saw, he saw that the, the Lord had revealed himself to these brethren as well, and, and I'm going to be able to encourage them and minister to them by, by sharing with them what I had received. But it wasn't of men. <clears throat> In other words, also, his, his gospel wasn't lacking. Once Paul had been given his gospel by the revelation of Jesus Christ, no man was required to add to it. What, what I mean by this, I, I, certainly other brethren kind of kind of give you a, a different view of the same thing, right? And it kind of clarifies what you can see in yourself, but it's not like another doctrine. It's not a strange doctrine. You see what I'm saying here? Uh, because obviously the, the apostle uh, did this. What, what I mean to say is once, once the apostle... Uh, received the gospel by revelation of Jesus Christ, he didn't go, as far as we know, and sit under uh, Gamaliel any longer. He didn't have to go back to Gamaliel and be taught of him, right? He received it by revelation of Jesus Christ. See, men, men, are, too, men are too, they're too low, they're too, too weak, too, too defiled and, and corrupt and easily uh, deceived. And so the gospel, the gospel actually is a revelation of the Lord making himself known uh, unto us in a sense, our salvation is actually deliverance from and the overcoming of our manhood. <laughs> we're being delivered from, in a sense, we're being delivered from ourselves. Right? Right? In other words, take up your cross. Take up your cross and follow me. Like, you have to die. It's, 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 you'll find that your old man, what you receive from Adam, is actually in opposition to the things of God and must be overcome. And by the Spirit, we can do that. For with men, it is impossible, the Lord said, but not with God. And so in a, a rebuke upon even the church in, in Corinth was that they were acting as mere men. Right? When they were, when they were, when they were living or thinking or speaking in terms of, of, of man. It was a rebuke upon them that they were living as mere men. <clears throat> in fact, we must be born not of the will of men, but of God. We must be born... Again, what we received as a man is not enough. It's not sufficient. It's only worthy to be destroyed. <clears throat> Salvation delivers us from the realm of men, even this present evil world. Remember when Peter thought and spoke after the manner of men, the Lord soundly rebuked him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You've set your interest on man's. You've set your heart on man's interest rather than God's. That was the issue there. <clears throat> but then Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Right? It's, not, it's not after men. That's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you. It's not after men. So even when, we, when we're preaching, you have to deny yourself. Anyone speaking knows this. You have to deny yourself when you're speaking. And share that which the Lord has given you. Let him forsake his own man and follow the man from heaven, the God man. And so he said... Uh, If I were a servant, I'm, I'm no more a servant of men, I'm, but a servant of Christ. See, that's when you receive the revelation from, from Christ himself, this now makes you not accountable to men, but accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it, and it's required of a steward to be found faithful, as faithful stewards of the mysteries of God. What God has revealed to you, it's required of you to be faithful with, with what God has revealed to you. You're not accountable to, the, to, the, to man. Right? And so when we judge one another with, with what is said, we judge on the basis of what God has revealed, not on the basis of like what we think about what you said. That's not profitable. The stewardship of the preacher is to God, not men. And so, and so we find ourselves as ministers of Jesus Christ, ministers of the word, ministers of, of God, ministers of a new covenant, right? <clears throat> our ministry to the saints is actually an outpouring of a higher calling and our ministry unto the Lord. Right? So in, in that we love God, now we love the brethren. 
Right? You, you want to love the brethren? How exactly do I love the brethren? Love God with all your heart. Amen. That'll minister a great deal to the brethren. But you see that it's an outpouring. Our focus is not on just ha- making other people happy, but when you serve the Lord and when, you, when, you, when you're a, good, a faithful steward of what he has given you, then you'll find that you'll please all ch- children of God. They'll, they'll, they'll be pleased. So while Paul didn't set out to, pl- didn't set out to please men, but when he preached the gospel, he, he pleased the men of God, did he not? He's pleasing us right now. As good soldiers of Christ, we seek to please the one who has enlisted us, right? <clears throat> we are accountable to him. So Paul was a steward of Jesus and was therefore accountable to him and not men. And yet his, his servitude to Christ made him a benefit to all men. This is what he said. Though I be free from all men. <laughs> Though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I may gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I may gain them that is under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, yet being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ. That I may gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I may gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And then he says, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker thereof with you. You see his focus? I do this for the gospel's sake. And so as we minister to the gospel, then we, in a sense, become all things to all men. But he was not seeking to please men. But he does please them in serving Christ and for the gospel's sake. So we are not, like, like Paul said in another place in Ephesians, as men pleasers, but servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. And as such, we are beneficial to men. So becoming all things to all men does not mean seeking to please men or co- becoming just like them, as it's commonly heard today. It means in the likeness of Christ, we are a help to all men in coming to God acceptably. In whatever capacity necessary, we strive to help men to be saved, becoming all things to all men. The gospel is not after men. It's not from men. It's not taught by men. Not an effort to please men. Not according to the wisdom of men. It's not that way. The gospel is a revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to spend the rest of my time speaking about that. So Paul did not receive his gospel of men. He wasn't taught it by men, but it was revealed to him by He says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. In fact, (laughs) it's not only by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, I mean, it's not only by him speaking from heaven and revealing these things. It's actually a revelation of him. It's a revelation of Jesus. It's a revelation of the Father. It's a revelation of deity. In other words, when, when you hear the gospel, you, you're not, you're not taking, your thoughts aren't taken captive to other things. When you hear the gospel, your mind is set on the Lord. <clears throat> In fact, this is the way Paul said it. When it pleased God to reveal his son in me. Well, what, what was this revelation, Paul? It's when, it's when it pleased God, and it, and it did please God. To reveal his son in me. That's what, that's what the revelation was. It was a revelation of his son in Paul. And it was, it was good news. And it changed everything. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation. Being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God to reveal his son in me, who separated me, who separated me from my mother's womb, that's quite a thought, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. See, this text is a testimony of Paul's, and I've been able to rejoice in it greatly because it's, it's also a testimony of mine. 
Paul's message drastically changed when it pleased God to call him by his grace and reveal his son in him. And my, my message and my preaching drastically changed when it pleased God to reveal his son in me. And your message, your gospel will drastically change when it pleases God to reveal his son in you. It's when you stop preaching about the traditions of your fathers and you start showing forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Amen. At least that's what it was for me. Is <clears throat> when, it's when I, I stopped defending the positions of a denomination and started to declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. That's the, it drastically changes everything. It's a revelation of him. It's when your doctrine goes from what you believe to who you believe. It's when you stop speaking about what you and your church is doing and what the Lord and his Christ are doing. Then you can say with the apostles, it is not, it is Christ whom we preach and not we ourselves. When God reveals his son in you, he will have preeminence in your preaching. It will become abundantly clear that all the scriptures speak about him, of course, as Jesus said. It will be, be, be abundantly clear to you that, that the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. <clears throat> in fact, the most effective way to edify, exhort, and comfort the brethren is to preach Christ. To preach Jesus, a person. True and sound doctrine is, in fact, the doctrine of Christ. False doctrine, a perverted gospel, will remove men from him who called them by his grace. And so revelation is revealing God. And you think about the spirit of, remember Paul prayed for that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would come to the church. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is in the knowledge of him. That's what it reveals. And once you get the knowledge of him, then everything else, you kind of get an understanding of who you are. You get an understanding of what the world is. But see, it's, it's, it's with your understanding of God. When it's a revel the gospel, brethren, is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And when he reveals himself and his father to you, I will show you the father, he said. When he shows you the father, well, then you get a clear understanding of what everything else is around you. Do you know? <laughs> well, that's bad and that's good. <clears throat> It's wisdom from above and a revelation of heavenly things, things of the Spirit of God, right? When God gives men a spirit of wisdom and revelation, they become more acquainted with God and with his Christ. And this is a way to evaluate the words of men. Do they clarify God? Do they clarify Christ? When this person speaks, am I attracted to God or to Christ or to his person or to another person? It's a, it's a way to evaluate, you see. See, the gospel is a revelation of Christ. And it's by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now in the gospel, Jesus is revealing the Father and their divine work. And so it can't be of men. <laughs> because, because when men saw, they, they, they saw a man being crucified. See, it requires the revelation of God to declare that the sin of the world was placed upon him. And his, he was making his soul an offering for sin. And he was putting away sin by the sacrifice of himself. God needs to reveal that. See, that's the gospel. See, and, and so it, it requires a revelation of God. And specifically, the revelation of Jesus Christ. It requires Jesus to be speaking from heaven and Jesus to be making these things known to you. And so we find ourselves as the church in Ephesus as those who have been taught by Christ. <clears throat> Only Jesus can reveal God and the work of God by him. And I suppose this is why angels find themselves longing to look into these things. Because the Son himself is revealing them. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and we testify of what we've seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, Nicodemus, and ye believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. In other words, Jesus is the only one that can reveal these heavenly things for, to you because he's the only one that's been there. <laughs> He's, so when, when the apostles' doctrine is a revelation of heavenly things, things to come, you know where they got it from. They got it from the master and the good shepherd and the one shepherd who will teach you and feed you with understanding, right, as the prophet said. 
He that cometh from above is above all. See, see, John the Baptist even was in on this, and he said, therefore, I must decrease and he must increase, because he that is, he that is from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony has set his seal that God is true. See, it's always in accord with what God has said. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation, and as such cannot originate from those who are in need of that salvation. <laughs> it can't be from men. <clears throat> men are not wise enough nor close enough to make known the sufferings of Christ and the glories of follow. They were separated from the Lord by sin. Men are the ignorant and the unlearned who are in need of such knowledge of the truth. Men need the saving, and the announcements of so great a salvation cannot come from them, but it can come by revelation of Jesus Christ, who accomplished that very work. So only Jesus could do this. God does all things well. He ordained that the gospel would be received by the revelation of his son, and he saw it, and it was good. It's just like the Father to honor his very elect that way, is it not? His chosen one. It's just like the Father to give him such a, such a word. Jesus said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. He has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, it seemed good in thy sight. Not of men, but by revelation. He continues, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, and no man knoweth the Father save the Son, and to whomsoever he will reveal him. Therefore, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, all of you who are seeking to come to the knowledge of the truth by man's wisdom, all of you who have been struggling to know the Lord, but have been deceived by the doctrines of men, all of you who have heard the gospel of men, therefore all of you come unto me. And you will find rest. Why? Because I will make the Father known. You'll find what you're looking for. Come to me and, I will, and you will find rest for your souls. <clears throat> God has deliberately made the wisdom of this world foolishness and has ordained that man through his own wisdom cannot come to know God. But the preaching of the gospel does in fact reveal God and save them that believe. Those who God teaches in this manner, they run to Jesus. Those whom, anyone who is taught of God, and they shall all be taught of God, anyone who is taught to God, they run to Jesus, and then Jesus brings them to God. And so it's by declaration, and maybe not as much explanation. The revelation from heaven is not explained, but declared by men. There is no explanation until there's further revelation, is what I'm saying. It requires further revelation. It's not as though God reveals something, and then you just have... You can just explain it all the way. It, 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 every explanation that we give is actually further revelation that has been given to us. And so we glorify the God of heaven. <clears throat> when God shows himself in a new light, it's considered the revelation of the Lord, of which the Apostle Paul had an abundance. Right? <clears throat> These revelations of the Lord must be proclaimed among the brethren. These revelations of the Lord must be proclaimed among us. The Lord has revealed something to you. I, for one, want to hear it. It must be revealed. If it's revealed to you, it must be made known. Preach it. And if, and if it's been revealed to you from the Lord, you have great courage and confidence in preaching it. It's from him. And so Paul says, I certify you. It's a certified, it's a certified gospel. Paul's gospel was and is a certified gospel. In other words, it can be and is verified. It's validated. It's confirmed. It's substantiated by God. In other words, Paul, you can come to town and you can preach this and the Bereans can gather their scriptures together and search the scriptures and find out that what you said is so. Right? It's a certified, it's a certified gospel. And this is how all sound doctrine is, incidentally. All sound doctrine is certified and in accord with the rest of Scripture. Any doctrine that comes in that kind of requires you to bend a Scripture or to rest a Scripture or to kind of like twist a text in order to make it fit, it's not from God. It's not a certified gospel. There's no confusion. God is not a God of confusion, right? So it clarifies the whole of Scripture. When people preach sound doctrine, it's clarifying. It has a clarifying capacity. <clears throat> The scripture cannot be broken. The true gospel confirms the scripture, whereas the false gospels pervert or, tr or attempt to break it. A certified gospel does not need man's validation. 
When Paul received this revelation, he didn't immediately consult with flesh and blood. He didn't consult with men, but he fellowshiped with the Lord. And I, I suppose that he pondered all these things in his heart. Have you experienced that? When the Lord reveals something to you, in other words, when the day dawns and the day star rises in your heart, when it just opens up to you, you can just fellowship with the Lord in it. You just, felt, you, you just rejoice in it. You say, I thank thee, O God, for making this known unto a babe. And then you can share it with the brethren <clears throat> so that they can be partakers as well. I want to make a last point here about, Paul frequently said this. He, he spoke of according to my gospel. Now it's the gospel, but it's also my gospel. See, Paul could say my gospel. And see, you brethren can also say my gospel. In other words, it's the record that God has given of his son, and you received it, and then it becomes the record that you give of God's son as well. And you can, you can kind, of, you kind of agree with it, and you can say, according to my gospel. According to what, in other words, we have this witness in ourselves. Right? And so we declare the very same thing that the Father, and so you, it's, it's in a personal sense. It's not only personal, but it is personal. Your gospel, the good news, or the gospel of your salvation, right? And so it becomes, it becomes personal. I rejoice in it. The gospel is of a personal nature. It doesn't mean that it changes from each individual. That's not what I'm saying. But it has personally been revealed to you and has personally saved you, has personally changed you, is personally sustaining you, and is personally going to accomplish its purpose in you and present you before the Father, faultless and with exceeding joy. And so we can confess in, in, in a way that when someone preaches the gospel, not, not just, I don't believe just because you said it, but I found for myself. I, I have found this out for myself. <clears throat> the gospel is a declaration of the testimony of God, which God has given of his son, and the testimony of those who have received that. <clears throat> so let me just conclude with this. What about your gospel? How did you receive your gospel? Is it of men or of God? Has the Lord revealed his son in you? Brethren, do not neglect to share with one another what the Lord has given you to see of himself. If it came from the Lord, do not fear speaking it. Jesus said, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And so if your words match up with his words, you're in good standing. <laughs> it's my estimation that the Lord... And all of heaven will give a hearty approval when that truth that he has revealed to you is proclaimed by you. You recall that <clears throat> it was those who had been redeemed that cried out with a loud voice because they saw the truth of their own circumstances. They saw the truth of their own salvation. They saw the truth of why they were standing before the throne of God and they said, salvation unto our God and unto the Lamb. That's, that was their perception. And so it was, it was the redeemed that said that. And what happened? Well, there was a hearty approval by heaven. All of heaven and the beasts and the angels and, they, they stood, and, the, and the elders fell down on the face and they said amen. They said amen to what redeemed man had said. See, that is the goal in preaching is to have heaven say amen. Regardless of whether men say amen, we want heaven to say amen to what we declare. Well, not only that, but this was a pleasant experience, I'm sure, for, for the brethren there that they said amen, but then they added. <laughs> they said amen, and then, and then they said blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. May such be the example and the experience of all of us. When we preach the gospel that has been revealed to us, that heaven might say amen, and that the brethren might add to it. Thank you, brethren.